Today's session is based on the REST API as per we discussed yesterday. This is the last cleanup uh, component that we use where we perform some cleanup activities. And also like in case of you testing also, that time also we use the REST API. Okay. Now, REST API URL, I believe I shared it yesterday itself. Uh, like how do we create a URL for REST API? Because uh, once you install the IBM BPM, if you see here, I'll just show you one thing. So this is how I start the server every day. Okay. So this is called the process manager quick start. And you see here, it says stop the process center deployment environment. Initially, whenever I start the server every day in the morning, it says start the process center deployment environment. And whenever I click on it, and whenever the server starts after starting everything, then all these links, all these URLs you see, VAS admin console, process admin console, business performance admin console, process center, process portal, all these URLs, uh, they get enabled. But your REST API will never appear here, okay? So it's a testing tool. So you need to remember the URL and you can use it whenever it is necessary. Okay. So uh, right now I'm inside the REST API, REST API tester. And if you see on the left-hand side, there is something called select API call. And in the select API call, there are so many options, but we need to use only one over here. Okay. Other than this, I mean, there are a lot of things over here, which are also related to IID integration designer. Okay. So we don't have to use that. We will use only BPM APIs in case if I need to test anything from here. And you see the first one, the first one says business process manager REST APIs. Uh, and if you're using BAW, now this is 8.6. If you're using BAW, this will the the name is different the name says ibm business process manager REST APIs. so just the matter of one word otherwise if you expand this everything is the same so so many apis are there i just expanded this there are process apis service apis task api like this you have so many apis all these apis are not required we need only few among this so we are going to use some of them from the process api few from the service api few from the task api okay so we'll see one by one we'll start with the process api one of the most important things is process api even for your cleanup say for example yesterday i was giving an example where an instance failed and we fixed the issue and we retried the instance from the process inspector Right now, there are cases, there are scenarios where you will see that even if you have fixed the issue and you have deployed it to say some environment, even if you're trying to retry it from the inspector, the instance will never be active, although the issue has been fixed. So in those kind of scenarios, we use process API. So there are few of the APIs which are there in the process API. We use them to retry the instance. Okay, so we'll see one by one. So let me expand this process API <clears throat> here. Again, you will see a lot of APIs are there. Again, not everything is required. So we'll see only those which are required for our debugging and cleanup thing for the production. One of the most important here is current state. Okay, current state means say, I have triggered one process, say leave application process, and say right now, uh, the token is active on top of the manager activity. So by this, what we mean, we mean the employee activity is already completed and the manager, active, manager activity is right now triggered, right? Now, generally we are doing everything, whatever sessions we have done till now, we have done everything from the development environment. And whenever I was triggering the process, you guys were able to see where the token is, right? Because the diagram was also visible on the left-hand side. So if I go back to my designer, you see, I triggered one instance over here 
and you guys can see this diagram and you guys can understand okay so which means that employee task is active right now because this token is on top of it but in case of an environment like a testing environment like qa or uat or even for the production environment you will never see this diagram right i will not be able to understand where the token is what is the token number you see the token number is 6 over here right and it is right now sitting on the employee tasks so this diagram will never be visible to you for the other environments so we have an api called current state api yes it will not show me the diagram but it will show me like which task is active right now where the token is sitting right now on which activity what is the token number everything will be visible to me with the help if i use this current state api okay for this we just need to provide the instance id over here you see here you have few parameters are there which we need to fill up the first parameter says process instance id so here if i put the instance id and if i click on execute you see there is a button right below which is disabled at the moment why it is disabled because i haven't filled up these parameters so once i fill up this parameter and then only this button will be enabled now in this three parameters guys only the first parameter is mandatory the other two parameters is not required uh, what are those parameters will discuss definitely but the first parameter is where you need to put the instance id so here you see i triggered one process this process leave application process and today morning i did some change i added a script before this employee task and in this script what i am doing i am just populating the employee id with the username whoever logs in whoever tries to trigger this process that person's username will be mapped where to the employee id of this employee information okay so this instance if you see the instance id it's 256 right so what i'll do i am going to put this instance id in the rest api and see whether whatever i'm seeing here is it matching through whatever is being returned by the rest api tester okay so we'll go back here and we'll put the instance id 256 and then here you have lot of things you see here parts there is all diagram header data execution tree so many of the things are there we just need to enable this execution tree this execution tree will give me which are the tasks which are active right now which of them have been completed what is the token id which is sitting on the top of the active task and which is the next task what is the data if if you see if i enable this data also it will also show me whatever runtime data that has been populated so employee information if i populate already then employee information uh, business object will be displayed over here it will show me which are the data that has been populated already okay so i click on execute call and i can see some information came on the right hand side before we go and see what information came let us go to the top and if you see here there is something called status 200 okay whenever you are executing any rest call any rest api call be it this current state and again we are going to go through some other apis also whenever you are triggering an api if you get a response with 200 okay which means that the call is successful okay if you don't get 200 okay if you are getting 404 or 400 then which means there is some issue with the call okay so whenever you get 200 okay uh, in response to any rest api calls which means your call is successful okay now if i scroll down then i am going to see a lot of information i can see the data you guys can see here data 
and I see here employee information. In this employee information, I see employee ID has been populated over here with Rahul, right? Apart from that, I don't see anything. Why I don't see anything? Because employee task has just been triggered. I haven't yet uh, claimed the employee task. I have not filled up in details over there. Okay. That's the reason employee information is right now only has employee ID data. Apart from this, everything is none. If I scroll down, here you see in a diagrammatic format of the employee information where you see only employee ID is there. If I scroll down more, I have seen, I can see the execution tree. In this execution tree, what I can see is the name of the process, right? And what else I can see? Again, I can see employee information. What else I can see? Now I can see which task is active right now. Employee task is active. What is the important thing over here? Token ID. I can see the token ID is also there. Whenever you guys, whenever you are running this current state, wherever you see token ID is being displayed, which means that task has been triggered. Say here is this place manager task. Say your manager task is already completed. Or say this is employee task. Say employee task is already completed. You will not see the token ID with the employee task. You will see it with the manager task. Because right now, the manager task is active and not the employee task. For this scenario again, for those who are having doubts with token ID, it is showing here token ID for employee task because right now, the employee task has been triggered and the token ID six is waiting on top of it. Then you see created task IDs. So this is the task ID of the employee task that is also being displayed. Okay. So like this, you can see your execution tree. Uh, in case of complex process, you guys can understand where there are multiple activities. So your execution tree can become very big. Right. So you have to scroll down slowly and see where the token is. Usually what we do in our uh, scenario where we have, we also have some complex processes in our project. So generally if the execution tree is huge. What we do here, control F and we search for token. Wherever it shows me token ID is there. Like right now it is highlighting over here, which means this task is active at the moment. And then if we need to do some other activities like moving the token backwards or forward, that also we can do. Just we need to get the token ID from here. Okay. So current state will exactly give you the current state of your instance ID, whichever instance ID you put over here. And accordingly, you can see which task is active. What are the runtime data that are already populated? And if there is any failure, then that failure also can be handled from here. Okay, we'll discuss about that. We'll come to that. All right, now uh, coming back to this uh, parameters, like I said, you these two parameters are optional. So first one says task limit. So say you have again, say you have a complex process where there are say uh, 10 uh, user activities are there in the process. So if you want to see the execution tree and if you want to see say only the first five tasks what is the execution state of the first five tasks so in that case i can put here five it will not show me all the 10 it will show me only the five user activities the state of the five user activities over here okay task offset what it says in specifies the index of the first task instance to be returned from the result set. So here, if I put here one, it will show me the result set only from the first task. Okay. Say I have employee task, I have manager tasks and I have senior manager task and all these things are there. If I put here one, it will show me only the details of the first task. That's the reason. We don't put anything over here because generally for a developer, 
we want to see everything the entire execution tree so we put only the instance id over here and coming to the parts we only enable the execution tree if you want to see the data you can enable it if you want to see everything then you can enable all it will show you everything over here whatever is there okay so this is about my about the current state of an instance